puffin', rhyming, muffin, cold and fly like an arctic, puffin', puffin', <sighs> back in the baggy. Hate another rapper's like a pot of taggy. I've been rocking this bag before electricity way back in the thousand BCE. That's before the common era, 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 oh. Anyway, have pre- you started recording? <laughs> Just as a bit of appreciation for Noah's hair because it is looking really fucking oh, good. Oh, sharp today. as hell these days. Yeah. It is. It's fresh. It's like, did, did you style it? Like, did you put stuff in it today? Only sea salt. Nice. Uh, yeah, he just Looking stood really at the good. beach in the so wind and let the shout. salt spray it's wash such a good over shout. him. <laughs> it looks awesome. Thanks. Um, I appreciate it. Oh my god, stop with the fucking pop ups. <laughs> this shit's going. What's up, my dudes? <laughs> Are we on? We're on. <laughs> All right, Noah's playing Dungeon Master this week. Oh, is it? Oh, He's is also it, playing Dungeon Oh, I mean, dungeon, dungeon Master of just options. Oh, I, I can, who wants to play Dungeon I can play Dungeon Master if you want. I sure, play, take the way. I All can right. play Dungeons and Dragons. No, I can't. <laughs> That's a stupid I, joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening in, chiming in, and all the support. We're going to have a bit of a fun one today. We had a bit of a meeting before and decided that we're going to have a bit more fun segments, a bit of structure. Uh, to this week's show but first and foremost how are you guys doing what's in the glasses and where have you been the last couple of weeks it's birthday week (laughs) oh god is that what we're doing (laughs) this is why Gemma was like we need to do that we need to do a podcast now we we need to wrap up before this time it's just you wanted to inch towards saying that yeah man it's it's birthday week um it's it's my birthday's a sacred and holy day um and is celebrated by many um, so happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, Gemma. Happy birthday, Thanks. Gemma. I'm the big two four, getting old. Wow. wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> the getting fine line old. Really old. Getting old. <laughs> getting yes. old. Yeah, Keeping thank- the channel cool. Do yeah. anything do anything special for your birthday other than just um, telling everyone? I'm actually going to <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, to Barrel Wine Bar in Sterling. I've not checked it out yet. So that's some wine related stuff that's also related to my birthday you're welcome yeah i did go to barrel the other week it's you actually did? quite a lovely little that's yeah, a good spot cool. they've got a really I, good wine list i've like pre-ordered the charcuterie, so that should be pretty good <laughs> did you see the uh nfl they're doing like hard knocks which is when they film the pre-season for the nfl team and then they release it yeah and there's a guy like yeah i want to go to vegas have me one of those shark coochie boards <laughs> i was like that's, <laughs> that's my sort of time eating yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry about you almost about your raising there mate <laughs> <laughs> Get some shark some coochie up in here. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so I that. pre-ordered a shark cooch. Probably have a couple bottles of wine. And then we're going to Lou's place in the Barossa on Ooh. Sunday. That'd be good. I'll go to the Royal Adelaide show on Saturday. I'll go to the Petting Zoo, the Bank SA Petting Zoo. Shout out. They've always got the cutest little animals. So that'll be No, Note that none of us sick. went cool to the Royal Adelaide show. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting used to not calling it the Ecker being from Brisbane. It's just, oh, it's always been the Ecker for me. So I'm still understanding what the Royal show and the, where the royalness really comes it, into royal, it. The, the royalty comes from the fact that it's that good. Well, you see, Brendan, that it's royal. As right? South Australians, we weren't settled by convicts, so we are royalty. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> We're the upper echelon of um, yeah. agricultural shows. Look at the, uh, the elitism that's immediately running f- through. It's How fine. Good. It's uh, fine. Well, you're you're another Queenslander, Noah. What yes. have you been? <laughs> what have you been up to? And uh, do you feel the hatred from these royal two? Uh, well, look, I, I'm. Queenslander by birthright, but that I rejected that very early on. I've been here since I was two. Like, you know, like I can't call myself a Queenlander uh, as much as I do like to whip it out every, every once every year when State of Origin is on. Um, oh, yeah, I'm a Queenslander for State of Origin, naturally. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, my, my entire family's from New South Wales, so I just use it as a way to rib them, nice. um, which that. is great. Uh, but what's been going on? Oh, I've been at home for like a month, which has been rare for me. I haven't really gone anywhere since the last time we did a potty, which is... Um, New, or well, not necessarily new, but, but you're not like, not here for much longer. You're no, I fly to America next week, and then I'm gone for six weeks. It's also your birthday next week. Yeah, yeah, and see, look at how quiet I'm about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I'm turning 28 next week. All days. Speaking of which, obviously for the channel, because I noticed a lot of support that we had in uh, from you guys out in the states as well. Um, 
Noah's going to be doing a lot of events and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, I course. will be getting a list of what I'm doing over there and I'll drop them in the in the channel and probably in the meetups little thing and just be like, hey, we're doing this, this, and this. Uh, I have free days off in San Francisco and Houston if y'all are free. If so you want to see me, if you want to see the most jet lag man alive, if you want to hang out in San Francisco, let's do it. Um, and if there's any cool little wine bars and restaurants that I should go check out in Houston, which I'm sure there is. Can you do something really cool in San Fran for me? The Princess Diaries walking tour. Absolutely I really not. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I last time I was there, I did see the 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 house from Full House. It's pretty cool. I don't know. She's just turned twenty four, dude. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I really want John Stamos. I really I really want to go to, like the arcade where Julie Andrews like did the thing and the firehouse that they lived in. This is. There's, there's, there's so much what? more cool shit in San Francisco. <laughs> then the Princess Diaries are incorrect. I'm going to say, like, Noah, like, I'm used to pretty hectic, um, like, trade runs through the States, but you've got a killer one. You, you, I don't think I've ever done what you're about to do, which is California, North Carolina, D.C., Maryland, Texas, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Michigan. God damn. I'm in the Packers. Green Bay. <laughs> You're making a t-shirt to put on the back. That's yeah, 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 that's yeah, that's a full band tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over, over uh, the course of it's three weeks. less than a month. It's three weeks. It's three weeks. That's crazy. It's oh, wild. Man. It's yeah. fucked up. It's pretty fucked up. Dude. And then don't I'm going to be a platinum frequent flyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't even, but you don't even come straight home. You've then got trade trips here. No, you go oh, straight I, fly, I fly straight into Brisbane via Auckland. Yeah. And then yeah. you're in Perth? And then I'm, so I'm in Perth next week, and then I fly back home, and then immediately fly to America. Then I fly back into Brisbane, fly back home for a couple of days, and I'm back in Perth. Damn. Yeah. I and then I'm do, done with travel for I the year. I should just do your Brisbane yeah. trade trip for you next week when I'm in Brisbane. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. You're going to Big Sound. We got a Big Sound. I'm I'm in I'm in uh, Brisbane for Big Sound. We got selected to play uh, among like 150 other small Australian artists, and we're like shown off like prize pigs to the industry for them to select who they want to like. If you're going to be shown off as prize pigs, it's a pretty cool fucking way to do it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, buy so tickets we, to Eka. <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but that's circle. That's, that's really sick, though. That it's, is yeah, super it's, sick. Yeah, I've never been to Brisbane, where, where the whole thing's taking place in Fortitude Valley, which apparently is really cool. Yeah, super fun. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a great time. Um, and it's going to be like 28 and sunny the whole week, but like thunderstorming and shit here. So suck on those. Yeah, I won't. I'll be out of I'll here. I'll be lapping it up. Still working. I'm still working in the morning remotely. The grind never stops. It's Sounds fine. Like Someone's it. got to run this business, you know? I'm kidding. Oh my <laughs> I'm God. kidding. Uh, uh, Henry. Henry. <laughs> Yeah, um, what have I been up to? Uh, look, honestly, man, life's been pretty slow since I had the appendix. I only just started drinking again, really. So a bit of recap, I think, for the audience here, because if we flash back to a previous podcast, mm. we, were, podcast. we were doing it yeah. while you were in hospital. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out I didn't realize that like appendixes were as serious as they were, but people have been really like, oh, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, it was fine. Whatever, a bit of surgery. Found out that um, Versace, Gianni Versace's sister died of an appendix thing. And like people, yeah. would, I got really lucky apparently. I could have died, but didn't. And I yeah. feel great. E except for the fact that you completely missed a trip to France. Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah, I mean, look, honestly, <laughs> when, I say, when I say I'm great, I mean I'm like six feet above ground right now. So like that's a step yeah. up. Was meant to go to France and taste all these delicious wines with my parents. Didn't end up doing that. Got to go stay at the new RIH. Um, Three billion dollar building. Yeah, very expensive. Fanciest building. Fanciest hotel yeah. I've ever. Did it feel in. like it? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like the surgeons and the surgery room seemed pretty complicated. The room that I was in seemed like a motel, but other than that. Uh, no, it was... I, I, I'm such an Australian. I'm so geared to, like, finishing a story with going, so, yeah, it was a good time. It wasn't a good time at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No worries, mate. No, nah, it was Lots fine. Lots of worries. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Port's in the finals. Your Yay. team... Pros Sorry. should be in the finals. We were robbed of being in the eight. I don't want to talk about that's it. Yeah. That's just... A, Beat that's, Gold Coast and you'd been fine. Yeah, it's bullshit. <laughs> like, that's just not true. Anyway, um... <laughs> You were robbed of the opportunity to potentially <laughs> make the finals. Everyone in Adelaide's acting like, oh, mate, Tex is going to win the Cullen, we're going to win the flag. Anyway. Um, Second highest goal scorer of the whole season. Who's Thank not in the finals. Who's not in the finals. Uh, yeah, yeah because racist. we were... Ro okay, well, that's, I can't dispute that. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, outside of that, what's going on? Look, honestly, man, fuck all. Like, I've just been hanging out to drink some wine with you guys, and we're back doing that that's now. Good. So, And we're drinking some lovely... 
Penfold's Bin 51 Eden Valley Riesling. It it slaps, man. Yeah, it's, it's such good. a good one. Like, this is always like, a good one. A lot like we're doing some really fun things today about deep dives and looking at great varieties that people love to to shame. People love to shame big companies, and Penfold's obviously monumentally sized. No company. one's first in line to shame big companies when it comes. Yeah. To oh, mate, most of just in look general. At me. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. This is great, though. This is really, really good wine. Like, yeah. this is, I mean, I don't think this is their cheapest. Like, this it's is fifty bucks. Yeah. Okay. 50 so, bucks. which is pretty pritz, ritzy for a, um, a riesling, really. Cracker. But as far as Penfold's bin series is actually decent price, and I've always said this about Penfold's kind of wines. Their white wines are much more enjoyable to drink than their red wines. Yeah, <laughs> which, which by the way, if anyone is watching, Penfold's did send this out to us, so we didn't buy this one. Hence the reason why we're not blind tasting it. Um, but if you want us to drink anything on the podcast, beers, yep. we're partial to beer, big I'll beer fans, beers. big uh, gin fans, big non-alcoholics as yeah, well. Yeah, like for the, for the drivers <laughs> in the room, he, he's Dude. normal. If you're watching, oh, he's normal. Hi- hiatus. If you're watching this, big hiatus lots. beers is excellent. I had yep. such. A, I ran into Brendo at the football on Saturday, and like I'm just so not used to the non like non out culture that is growing in Australia because like yep. you know Brendan's my boss. I've yeah. walked up to him holding two Imperial pints on the Saturday Arvo <laughs> and I've gone, oh, just so you know, boss, they're not alcoholics. He's like, really? Where? I'm like, they're not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just joking because obviously I'm an alcoholic who only would drink beers at the footy. Like the idea of a non-alcoholic <laughs> at the footy is so foreign to me, but I get, it's happening. And I've clearly it's get good. one. I, I, no, I didn't. I, I didn't manage to, to find any uh, non-alc beers at the footy, which should be like, it, it should be yeah. uh, They've option. got the can yeah. bar. They should just chuck some non-alc cans there. Totally. Easy. 100%. Easy. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad shout um, Brendan, how have you been? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, busy. Uh, obviously went to the States, came mm-hmm. back, had a great time, was bonkers, still going through all my notes. Uh, and since we've been back, we've been doing a lot more stuff on the farm. So mm. all the uh, apple orchard trees are out. <laughs> They've all been plucked from the ground. Um, we're ba- basically in like start of springtime now. So spring is sort of hit with a bit of a vengeance, which is great because I was waiting for winter to get over and done with. Mm. Uh, so we have like goats on a side of a hill, um, you know, <laughs> chewing up all the blackberry. Are they baby goats? Um, they are not baby goats. They are, they are, goats are goats are big. Yeah, like yeah. really quick. Yeah, like really, big. really quick. I didn't realize how tall they, they are. Have They're like small like, cows. The, these ones? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, cool. the, the goats have horns. Yep. Um, nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're <laughs> horny goats eating a lot of weeds. Uh, so the um, don't we all? So and so we're um uh, I'm gonna be starting back up more of I think the posts that I was doing before about like mm. activity at the farm and mm. stuff like that, which is really follow Unico Zello for all your yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. farming farm related, related farm YouTube content. YouTube content. When, yeah. uh, what's the like? When are vines going in there? Is it like four years away? Is I it actually six think months away. Poss- possibly sooner rather than later. I was expecting it to be in at least another twelve months. Could well be. Like to be fair, it will be because if we're not getting any anything this springtime, it won't be till next spring. But I was sort of thinking like it was way 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 down the the line, but. Mm. As the sort of plans for the cellar door are working out, we might actually have room for about an acre or two of vines to go in um, out near where the like car park is going to go down yeah. and the walk down. Spot. Yeah, it is a pretty good spot. So it'll get us starting things, but really the the primary um, sort of goal at the moment is just open the cellar door, open a place where if you love Unico, you can come visit. If you love Unico, you can come visit Applewood Distillery, which is a bit of a misdirection. It's a bit of a bait and switch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not really. It's not the Unico vibe. It's a different. No, nah, it's a different sort of energy. People come in here expecting Unico, and they get sort of like Unico ish sort yeah, of energy. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. it's very Applewood. Yeah, different, different, Indeed. different deal. Yeah, hundred percent. But now, what do you want to do first? Cool. So, because we've got these different, we've got a, a bunch of different segments. We thought we'd actually break up this this uh, show, mainly for the sorry reason, me selfishly, so I can entertain Henry Hammersley. Shout out to Henry, uh, who <laughs> listens to this podcast. He's a staff member based in another city, so listens yeah. to this to feel included, connected, connected. Yeah. Uh, and so we're doing this for you, friend. Um, <laughs> Yikes. We've still got wine, wines and glasses, so uh, I don't think we should. We've got a bit of an options game. Noah's going to play Dungeon Master for yeah. options game. Bring it back. What were you going to roll with? Uh, i got a celebrity wine quiz for you. Cool. I'm keen. Oh. Let's do it. So, okay. fun. basically, fun, fun, fun. Uh, this isn't as put together as the future quizzes will be, because as you said, we came up with these concepts 
an about hour an hour and yeah. a half ago, but I've gone online, found out a whole pile of celebrities who are making their own wines, and mm-hmm. we've done that before, you know, Daniel Ricardo, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask you D-Arthur. who's making the wines. I'm going to ask you about these people's wines. There's okay. various sort of questions. You can all have a go, a bit multiple sure. choice, a bit not. First of all, Cameron Diaz. You know Cameron Diaz, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Shrek. 90 star. <laughs> Yeah, Shrek. Yeah, that's yeah, actually, wow. yeah, Shrek. Yeah, Shrek. Yeah, wow, yeah. Fiona. Yeah, Fiona! Yeah. <laughs> no, that's Shrek. Um, so, uh, Cameron Diaz has a wine brand called Aveline, and I want you to tell me which of these is listed as one of the features of Aveline's wines, one of the selling points of Aveline's wines, yep. okay? Is it A, unlike other wineries, we actually list all the ingredients used in making the final product. These lists include things like organic grapes. Okay. okay. There's your ingredients <laughs> list. Is it B? The vineyards are planted next to one of the oldest naturally occurring springs in Spain, ensuring a pure water supply. Okay. Is it C? <laughs> the, bi- the biodynamic vineyards are tended exclusively by Aries, the sta- same star sign as Cameron and founding partner Catherine Powell. <laughs> or is it D? We only make sparkling wines as wine has already been a cause for celebration, and nothing answers the call to celebrate like a glass of sparkling. <laughs> Wow, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely C. It's C. It's C. I really. am actually no. I I think they don't understand the concept of biodynamics. There's no way that Cameron Diaz is and like I, I a Steiner of actually fan. what A is. I think it is actually from another wine brand that's owned by a celebrity. So but I think it's C. I'm, think, look, I'm, I'm looking in C. So you all think C. that they are genuinely trying to sell wines on biodynamics? No, no, no I'm, I'm on A. I'm all on A. You're on A. I uh, mean, I like it because. I, I didn't think of it, and I think it's a really funny. I think I <laughs> no, buy I, our wine because mercury is in Gatorade. <laughs> uh, I genuinely think that, like, this is it's boardroom marketing bollocks, mm. and mm. someone has come up with this biodynamic thing and then twisted it up and then decided to sell it. It's well, really you're good. right because I did come up with that when I was making up fake answers. <laughs> the answer yeah. is actually a. No uh, way. Yeah, their whole thing is like, we no put way. every ingredient right? on the labels. And I was looking at the labels on the front. It says ingredients, grapes. I thought... <laughs> Wait, what? They don't put in sulfur? They say you're saying that Cameron Diaz is making 00 natty wine? It seems like she's making 00 so natty wine. Have I got this? There's some pea then? proteins in there. But other than that... Um, oh, I've got like... this mixed up. I thought it was the goop chick. Nah, that was doing Paltrow. Paltrow, yeah, yeah. doing doing the, this the sort one of thing. The one who made the vagina candle? Yes. Yeah. Pop off queen. But I thought she was doing this whole, like, we're making healthy wine... Wine, clean you, wine. No, that's clean wine. Clean wine. That was Cameron yeah. Diaz. That was Cameron Diaz. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. Alrighty. Well. Um, <laughs> number two. We're talking about Dwayne Wade now. Uh, basketball oh, star. Yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne awesome. Absolutely. Hall of Fame. NBA champion. All of that sort of stuff. Now, Dwayne Wade. Uh, he officially launched his wine in 2020 at the Super Bowl, right? And when you go on... Good year. Yeah, great year to be getting into the game. <laughs> great year to be getting into the game. When you go onto his website, uh, there's sort of like the Our Story page. Yeah. And it has this timeline of events that led to the release in 2020. I want you to guess what year they nominate the official story starts. For the 2020 release date, when did they start this whole progress okay. towards... Is A, 1985. Mm-hmm. Is it B, 2005. Is it C, 2014, or is it D, 2019 for the 2020 release date? When did the Our Story page begin? I'm looking in 1985 because I bet that's the year he was born and his journey started the day he entered the world, man. (laughs) Dwayne Wade's first words coming out of the room were, Pino! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It was like Petty Vado or something. Natty Wade! Petty Uh, Vado! I'm going to go 2005. 2005. Again, you guys are pretty I'm average at this game. Um, it was actually 2014, which is the least interesting number out of all of them, so it was a bit of a bogey question, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is. It seems realistic. <laughs> yeah, because he was born in 1982, you fools. That wasn't the yeah. year he was born. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a good like, bait and switch. He's, he's actually quite the age. He's retired. He's retired. Oh, he's retired. He's retired. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, all right. Oh. All right, not going to lie. That was my least favourite question of the four that we've got. This is probably my favourite, okay? Okay, cool. All so right. we're talking about Post Malone now. Post Malone oh, awesome. yeah. has released a wine. Yes. Um, it's this really fancy, big, tall bottle. It's a French rosé. That's what he's made. And all I fancy, want- big, tall bottles tend to be yeah. French rosés. French rosés. I want you to tell me, why did Post Malone decide to make rosé? Okay. All right? Was it A, rosé is for when you want to be a little bit fancy? Okay. Is it B, pink lollies were always my favourites? Is it C, 
the ladies love a rosé <laughs> where I'm from. Or is it D? I can't drink red wine because it gives me heartburn and white wine is for pussies. It's I, so deep. I reckon it's I, re- I really hope it's D. Malone I reckon made it's, a rosé because of what reason? I I reckon it's the fancy call. Just, I can see that coming out of his mouth in an interview. So, okay. no, so it's, it was fancy, it was... Um, fancy, pink lollies, ladies love it, or r- red wine gives you heartburn and white wine. <laughs> 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 I'm looking in D because that's brilliant. I'm, I'm going to go B. I reckon B. I reckon, you like, I reckon he's, silly, he's a silly, a silly enough answer. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think he's a pretty down-to-earth kind of guy. Well, you know you post Malone, Brendan, because it is actually I, just because he wants it to be a little bit fancy. I reckon a is the correct read answer an there. article about this as well. Probably the same yeah. article and I read 25 minutes ago. Yeah, probably. and to be yeah. honest, it was probably, like, he was asked, why did you make rosé? And he was like, don't say money, don't say money. He was oh, because I feel like being a little bit fancy. <laughs> fancy. <laughs> I think uh, he actually referenced, uh, uh, is it White Girl Rosé? Is a like a, a brand in the States that just kind of blew up. Like, went absolutely bonkers. It's in Cairns. It's at um, all these, like, festivals and stuff. And I think his managers or agents were like, hey, like, you could just make your own rosé so you don't need to bring these other sort of players mm-hmm. on board to have to pay for them and stuff like that. And then, yeah, he, it is ultimately... And of course it is a money play, but it's, it's sort business. of an interesting money play because they looked at what was being consumed at his shows. Mm, that's uh, that's clever, dude. All yeah. Time Low did that. Yeah? Well, I don't think they took that much data, but they made wine and then they like released the wine sort of like merch. And there was like an All Time Low wine club. Mm. There's like there's like there's like some, some I did subscribe to that not, newsletter because right. I don't want to jump I don't know what this fourth question is but uh-huh. is it to do with TikTok? Nah. Cool. So did you hear it, it happened like this week or last week about a NBA player that launched a um, their own wine that they made in um, in conjunction with I think with like a, a Napa Valley or potentially a Bordeaux. I know it's like a Bordeaux based blend. Mm. Yeah. And they sold it on TikTok with a, in a collaboration with a um, uh, it was like just a TikTok out of China. And they yeah. sold 20,000 bottles in three seconds. That's, That's crazy. Might have actually been Dwayne Wade because, uh, yeah, he's based in Napa and also uh, has had a lot of involvement in the Chinese wine market as well. Jesus Christ. It. It's- with all that information, I could have come up with a lot more interesting of a question than the year, but we're on time pressure. <laughs> <Sorry, guys. laughs> well, what's, what's, what's question number four? Question number four. Okay, so this puts a bit of flip on it. You know, um, when you go to a winery's website, there'll be a little story about why you do what you do. Like what, what motivates you to put these grapes in the bottle, right? I'm going to read you the little bio from one of these celebrities' websites, and I want okay. you to guess okay. which awesome. celebrity has said this about their mission to make their so wine. So is it Dwayne Wade, Post Malone, or Cameron Diaz? No, nope, I'll or? give you. Uh, so the four. I'll give you the four celebrities afterwards, but yep. this is uh, a completely new one. My romance with wine began many years ago on bicycle trips with Goldie and our family through the great wine regions of France, Italy, and California. Those fabulous excursions through the picturesque vineyards provided the opportunity to sample many terrific wines. <laughs> Sampling might be putting it lightly. Especially when Burgundy's concerned, those wines don't just steal my palate, they stole my heart. It wasn't long <laughs> before the wallet. dream of creating beautiful wines of my own was born. The treasured conversations I've had with various winemakers and producers from Burgundy to Bordeaux, Tuscan in Napa, served to fuel my dream to someday take the leap from fancy to reality. Okay. okay, so a lot of bike rides, a lot of beautiful Tuscan villas. Was that A, Arnold Schwarzenegger, B, Kurt Russell, C, Leonardo DiCaprio, or D, Sylvester Stallone? It was Kurt Russell. It was Kurt Russell. I also agree, Kurt Russell. So you guys know that Kurt Russell makes wines then, hey? No, we know that Kurt Russell is married, married to Goldie, to Goldie Horn. Horn. <laughs> I thought that was a dog. I'm not going to lie. That didn't even, that didn't e- not <laughs> even, I, I that didn't even <laughs> twig with me. Do you know why Kurt? God I damn it. I thought I checked thing, it for names. Nora and I like, like Goldie. We're like, Goldie Horn? Like, yeah, it's Goldie, I don't know Goldie, who Goldie, Goldie like, Horn is, but I know that Kurt Russell was the dad in Sky High, which is like one of my favorite movies of all time. So... Wait, and just, what was the answer? <laughs> it was Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you, I should have removed his wife's name from the question as it yeah. turns out. Anyway, that's a very disappointing end to the first ever celebrity wine quiz. I'll see if I can come up with better questions. I just like, I love a good wine quiz. I, I, hey. I don't. I'm bad at it. No. You got Goldie. Now you learnt. I learnt that Cameron Diaz... Trek is on another planet. Yeah, yeah. Cameron Diaz. <laughs> anyway... Um, I read a really interesting, this is not about wine. It's just, just wild, just really quickly so we can get into some serious wine chat. I read this really interesting <laughs> article about men. Oh, and- here we go. Oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> oh, no. Go on. 
No, it was an article uh, written by a guy who works in an ER and the amount of objects that he has to remove from rectums. The percentage yep. oh, wow. of men to women was like 98% men. It's staggering. It's like, staggering. Stop putting me. Hot Wheels in your rectum. I think what that- are you doing? <laughs> I like hot take. I think that if where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where this has come from. Kurt yeah. Russell has just I triggered think, something. I think it's that men. <laughs> if men had an option other than their asshole to put things up, then they probably would, which yeah, might have like, a discrepancy women in the have an option. between men and women. Women have an option. You don't see us putting Hot Wheels up there, man. <laughs> oh, just been to different <laughs> corners. Of there was a guy. <laughs> there was a guy who put like a like you know like the pasta ones with like the it's like a scoop but it's got like the fingers on it. Yeah. Oh like my how God. Do like people put weird shit up their butt? Like yeah, hundred percent, man. It's I saw one of those don't knock until you try it sort of deals. I mean, oh, I can't really see so many things that happen to knock. I've got a I got a, one of my mates is an ER nurse and he's seen some weird shit. You he's just do yeah. like it's so funny. Like I yeah. You have a personal anecdote that relate? What? <laughs> Sorry. Have you got a? It felt like you were about to launch really into a personal anecdote. It's like, like they're, they're, Gemma, do you use these uh, like podcasts as yeah. like a type of speech therapy? Because like you were really keen to get launched into this, and first, first, it's straight up. It's like birthday week. Next minute, let's talk about men putting shit up their bums. Do you know what it is? I use it as a stand-up comedy platform. <laughs> <laughs> no, take, down, take this down. We need a brick wall. We got the spotlight. It's all good. What's the deal with the airplane fooled, huh? Um, yeah, because like in gigs, we only have a certain amount of time to like talk between songs. And I'll just get carried away. Is this the reason why your band took your microphone away? Yeah, you? because I would get drunk and I would just dribble garbage for like 15 minutes. <laughs> So you and prefer to do it sober now. that's the now. sort of hot shot talent we need on this podcast. <laughs> God damn it. Well, like, I'm just really funny. and There's just nowhere else that I can... <laughs> All right, so I'm we're rolling to some Discord questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, got a, right. I've got a waiter's friend stuck up my ass. How do I get it? <laughs> Code. Yeah, on Discord, send us the weirdest thing you've <laughs> The weirdest, weirdest, weirdest wine related you paraphernalia. Crank it up and it just opens up. We don't know what to do with yeah, it. Just... <laughs> All right, so Segway. let's let's start. We've got a couple of questions uh, from the Discord channel. If you guys want to ask any questions, drop on the Ask Us Anything uh, sub channel uh, on the main channel and it might end up here. First question, first cap off the rank. What did wine mean to you in the past? What does it mean to you now? And what do you think it will mean to you in the future? And I would posit this to both Gemma and Henry, mm. mainly because I think wine, all of you guys, all of you guys, starting with Henry. Um, uh, what wine used to mean to me? I had, a, I had a funny thing happen to me in uh, primary school, actually. So dad was always, uh, he always had, you know, wheeling and dealing. There was always uh, bloody dozens of wine sitting in the front room of the house that mum was always upset with. And... We used to go and do bottling up at Bleasdale and all of this stuff. So I just saw- The red gum collection. Yeah, red gum collection. Exactly. So my dad was a journalist, but as a child, I thought he was just a wine person. I thought that was his job, that he was a wine person. That's how much he was dealing with wine wine sort of thing. Okay. So I wrote this story when I was in like reception and this, it was, you know, just a short little narrative or whatever. And the story was basically that I'd accidentally gotten drunk. So I went and spoke to dad about it because he was the expert on that. And then Getting the te- drunk. on wine is okay. what I'd meant. And then the teachers read it and then gone, oh, I love this story. We need to get your parents in to talk about it. So mum and dad have come in. I'm thinking that I've done really well. It turns out they were having a bit of an intervention to make sure dad wasn't drinking too much at home. So that's where wine started for me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, that's where wine started. So wild. Um, and then uh, at this point where it is now, uh, obviously the last like three, it's coming up in three years that I've worked for you guys now. Yeah. Um, so the last definitely two years, uh, it's been a big sort of transition from something that I didn't like drinking and saw as sort of like an older person's drink to now something that I actually professionally have a bit of stuff to do with. Um, you got a whole comedy show and shit. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Being considered and... a wine expert on the um, import taste show. Don't you laugh? That's not the joke. That's not the joke. I'm there for the knowledge, not the humour. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so like to that point is now something that, yeah, has been, uh, it, it's been this sort of weird thing where I'm not ever going to be like a wine 
uh, it's not going to be my profession. I'm not going to be a wine maker. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to uh, necessarily be, you know, uh, investing in wineries and things like mm -hmm. that. But it's at the stage now where over the next five to ten years, I can definitely see it sort of being this. Uh, as someone who wants to be a radio personality or just like yeah. having a little quirk to you, like you can be like, oh, yeah. that's the guy who's got that little wine edge and a little football yeah, edge. Yeah. It's just another thing that I've got in my... Mm. Repertoire. Yeah, repertoire. Yeah, it's a good arrow I'm... in the quiver. Yeah, exactly. And it's a good niche specialty to have in a kind of wider context. And in this state as well, like in and around yeah, here where yeah. we're a wine place. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, these days, I yeah, quite like it. It would be <laughs> two-word summary. Yeah, not bad. Three-word summary even. Not That's bad. a good drop. How do you know what's past, present, future? What does it mean to you? Oh, fuck. Um, well, I guess like in the past, like, you know, before I started working in the industry, I thought it was just the most pretentious fucking like group of wank that I could ever imagine. It just it just feels like it like it feels elitist. Like it has like it, it feels gate kept. It feels like it's just like it's designed to actually not introduce new people and I, I think probably early experiences in the wine industry was you know kind of like oh people really expect you to know all of it all about it and if you don't know about it you're treated as kind of lesser mm. uh, so that was what it meant to me initially and that was kind of the relationship i had it probably based around my parents and my wider family as well it's like going to winery and just like looking at people just like swirl and sniff and spit it's just like it's a it's a beverage swallow it um but yeah so that was kind of my initial relationship and then of course when i got into it i was like oh it's actually not that that's just once you get through that barrier it's like oh there's actually creative interesting uh thought-provoking people that are doing that are really blue collar and just working really hard for not much money um because that's really what the end of the day is it's like it is a passion project no one gets into the game for money unless you're working for a big company mm. uh so when, when once i stumbled into like i guess like that natural wine that craft minimal intervention wine sphere it's like oh it's actually not what i expected but with that being said inside that industry there's another wall of gatekeeping as well yeah um so that it kind of shifted to what it is now is which is i find it a very creatively stimulating interesting um a uh, great way to kind of travel the world in both whilst drinking uh tell stories of different cultures places and times and stuff like that which is the whole goal of wine i guess uh, so that's the way i view it now in the future i don't even know um that's uh, that that is i'm not a very future forward thinking person i'm a very like pragmatic look at what's right in front of me and mm. <laughs> figure it out from there um but i guess like it'll be something that i kind of i'm always striving to improve my knowledge base on and my skill set in so i guess it's just like constantly chasing the carrot of being as good as i can mm. within the industry um that was yes. a better answer that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma, blow us away. Oh, wow. Um, well, I'm still, like, new. I've only been, like, in the wine industry, if you can even call me being in the wine industry, being in the wine industry. I've only been here for, like, nine months, which isn't a very long time. And my... It feels longer. It feels like a lifetime, man. Um, my isn't this your third birthday week since you've been here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but what, um, what was it to you? It well, it was something that I shared with my dad. I grew up going to a lot of wineries with my family and my grandpa, and stealing booklets. And my dad would make like bits of art out of them. It was great. Um, but I bet like it's something like he'd pass me the wine glass. I'd taste it as a child and go, "This is disgusting. Mm. I want nothing to do with this." And then I sort of, it took me a really long time to come around to wine. It probably wasn't until I was like 21. So maybe like a year and a half, two years ago that I actually started drinking wine because I just thought it was something that old white men did. Because looking from the outside, you don't really see a lot of young women no, in wine no. or talking about wine or... This just being true, yeah. or just drinking wine unless it's like Moscato. Yeah. Like there's yeah, not a lot of like yeah, representation of, of young women in the wine industry. Um so I didn't really see myself even being involved in the wine industry. Um but now I am. And it's it's pretty cool. 
place to be, man. Yeah. But I'm still at that, like, point, like you said, Noah, that there's still very much like a... It does feel like a bit of a club. Yeah. And, like, unless you have a base level of knowledge or you like a certain type of wine, you're not allowed in, like, the cool guy's wine club. And, like, that's definitely not the vibe here, obviously. But, like, it is still sort of, like, the general vibe. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'll hang out with people outside of work, you know, men drinking wine, and you just, like, what you say is just not valid because what would I know as a young woman drinking wine, you know? Drinking red wine. Like, you're yeah. you're meant to drink white wine, and, and that's all you can drink because you're a woman. Mm. It's just really weird. I think it was... Um uh, Post Malone, who said, "White wine is <laughs> pussy." Yeah, no, nah, you, you, sorry, I'm joking. But yeah, that's completely fucked up. It does happen it's, so much. Well, yeah, and it's well, like it's, it's very legit. It's, it's the reason why the channel exists. Yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah. percent That's and the whole it's idea. Like being in like a woman in music as well. Yeah. You see mm. a lot of the same thing, and there's actually a lot of crossover between wine and music because you go to a venue Huge. and you ask yeah. for like. You know, you'll go, you'll play at a venue where they have like a pretty good wine list and you'll ask for a glass of whatever. Mm. And they'll just sort of give you this like, oh, okay, okay. And then everyone else behind you asks for a vodka raspberry. Yeah. It's yeah. just sort of like you shouldn't be drinking that, you know? Why yeah. Why are you drinking that? And if you are drinking it, why, you're not meant to enjoy it. It's yeah. weird that they even serve it to you in the first place. Like, like if you don't, if you don't want people drinking it. Don't, don't. put it on your fucking menu. 100%. Yeah. Take but like, do, but you know who can drink it? Men. Yeah, that's really fucked. Men can drink it. That is genuinely and that's fine. backwards. Like, it's it's actually really funny the amount of times. Where was I? I was at a cellar recently buying wine for Father's Day, and I had a really interesting experience because I was looking at all the wine, trying to pick a bottle for my dad, and I like to think I can sort of pick a good bottle for my dad. I know what he likes, and the guy just comes because Michael, my partner, was with me, and. He comes straight to me. Do you need a hand? Uh, and like okay. Michael knows less, way less than me about wine. It's do you need a hand? Like me specifically. Yeah. Can I help you with oh, anything? Cause, cause do you the, need the a hand? The implication was that your partner was well sorted. Yeah, he's they know fine. What he knows what he's. I'm, he he can look for wine and be fine because he's a dude. But I couldn't possibly find a bottle of wine for my dad because I'm a young woman. And it's yeah, just, rough. it's like, why went, is this still a thing? I went to a bottle, bottle shop with my partner and uh, I was talking to the buyer. And since probably I've got reputation, I guess, within the industry, I was having a good conversation. My partner was there and he literally reached over her to grab a bottle to, whilst it's not just, even acknowledging her ex- existence well, or anything. And then just gives me this bottle and talks to me. And it's like, that's, f- <laughs> it was fun. He recommended just like a few bits that I was just like, oh, nah, you know, like he probably wouldn't like that. He's sort of, you know, lighter, medium bodied reds, not sort of into the the heavier stuff. You know, he's into more alternative varieties and he's just sort of giving me this look of like, fuck, you actually know what you're talking about? I'm like, yeah, like I work at a winery. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, which one? I'm like, that one right there. Because they had our stuff. I'm like, yeah, that one. Yeah. And he was like, oh, cool. Like I took a bottle of like this home and it was awesome. I'm like... Thanks. Yeah. yeah. It should be a note to everyone. Inclusivity wins. It always wins. Yep. No matter yeah. what happens. Uh, but I guess for my future, and I just want to know more, you know, and mm. like being on um, an episode of Blind Wine, which went up today, it's really hard. Like, it's a lot. Hard. Like, after every wine I picked up, tasted it, and I just went, I don't know. It's like mm. wine. I'm supposed to tell you it tastes like dark cherries and chocolate. Like, it tastes like fucking red wine. What do you want from me? <laughs> But, it's but do you like it? Do you enjoy it? And would you pay money for it? Is this well? There like- was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think my, fav- my 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 favorite my favorite line of the whole episode. If I can spoil, I think it's in like the the, pre- the intro bit was, I'm being paid to drink it now, but you couldn't pay me to drink it again. <laughs> is r- is like really <laughs> sad. It's a good world. It's, it's a really good world. Should we move on to drinking something different? Noah, did you want to take us through a yes. game of options? Do you want to play? Yeah, I'll spit. You've got yeah, spit. We got this. This is fun. Book okay. it. So, all right. I said something intelligent and not f- as a joke for like five minutes. Is How this some? Is this something your dad does? Does he has, has he done this shit? Nah, because right. he's not a loser. <laughs> Rough. Yeah, no. Rough. My dad did not put a bottle of wine in a sock. 
thanks. <laughs> <laughs> More so the sock that's been sat Speaking under the which, air conditioner for like six I, months. I love the idea of this is Wine for the People merch, a blind tasting sock. Yeah. Mm. Comments below. You should have put if a Unico sock on it. It would be worthwhile. Um, so have you played, do you know about the game of options? I assume you're given oh, wow. options. Yes, you are given options. So it's ba- it sick. was it was a it was a game invented by the great Len Evans, I believe. It I don't was, know who that is. He was a wine guy, um, and we'll go from there. Uh, but basically, the idea is that you're it's a way to train people as far as identifying a wine. Ah. So you're asked a bunch of questions, and then you whittle it down from like a large school of like basically everywhere in the world and then if you answer correctly or incorrectly then it gets whittled down and then you eventually find out I'm what the exact be wine really is really bad at this yeah, yeah exactly it helps you calibrate yeah it helps yeah you kind of go like when i'm tasting this and you have to answer yeah so rather than trying to uh say like what this wine is what year it's from uh what slope it's on or whatever um which is like trying to ask a lot of questions and answer them very quickly mm. over something that is inherently very complex and difficult to do you're actually only asked to answer two questions or one question, which yeah, is, okay. is this wine A or B? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that in mind, uh, the first question is always new world or old world. I don't know what that means. So uh, <laughs> new world is basic. So old, we'll start with old world. Old world is basically France, Italy, Spain, Germany, all of the con- like European countries where kind of grapes were nat- Na- a native na- to. Yeah, cool. And then gotcha. old new world is basically where those grapes have traveled. So Australia, America, Chile, Argentina, New Zealand, South Africa, stuff like that. Cool. Mm. So with the smell of this wine, do you think it's uh, f- pretty uh, old school from the old world or do you think it's something that you're probably more familiar with from your own backyard or an American something I, or other? I also like think that? that both of us should go before you because you're going to lead the witnesses here. Yes, because 100%. We will, yeah. This is going to be the point. I agree. Fair, Absolutely fair, what I would have done. I, my gut instinct is to say... Well, like that's a that's a complex question because by old world and new world, do you mean like where has it where has it come from or where, where has, has the this variety come? From? Where has the grapes been grown and the wine has been made? Okay, cool. I'm gonna say new world. Yep. Mm. See, I like if I'm uh, playing the game of like where we decides we're gonna play options and you mm-hmm. pick out a bottle that we've got sitting around yeah. here. I, would, uh, I I think that smells old world. I think it smells mm. like like. Uh, spicy and bitter and just mm. things I associate with like that Italian sort yeah. of uh, yeah. see bread. I I associate it with the same thing like an, an Italian variety that like spicy mm. big bold fruity thing but I've also only really drank Australian wine and it's really smelling like a lot of the wines I would try mm. at wineries in like the Barossa <laughs> yeah. makes a lot of sense yep could very chat. well be so you're going new world um, I'll, I'll go old world Brendan? Uh, I, I've got it like an inkling, like, I, I kind of am already a few questions ahead. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go New World. New World. All right. The answer was New World. Whoa. So, yeah. Now, we're going to countries. Uh, is this from South Africa? Uh, is this from New Zealand? Or is this from Australia? Mm. Mm. I think it's from Australia. So currently, if we were playing the game, Henry's been knocked out. Yeah, yeah. Henry, Henry wouldn't ever play. Yeah, oh, anyway, but, but he's not in the running to win. Yeah, basically. No, gotcha. no, no crown for me today. So my reasoning behind that is I've not had any South African or New Zealand mm-hmm. wines, <laughs> and fair. it smells like something I've had before. So cool. yep. yeah, it smells that, familiar. It doesn't smell sense. like oh my god, what the fuck is this? Yep. Um, I think it's South African. Cool, Australian. Uh, this is Australian. I am flying today. <laughs> I'm quite good at this. Uh, now, is this from uh, Victoria? Is this from South Australia? Or is this from Western Australia? I think this is from South Australia. South Australia? Can I taste it? Yeah, of course you can oh, taste it. Yeah, you can, you, can, smell you, can, it. you can smell and taste all the way through this. Like... This is from South Australia. SA. Um, so it's SAWA or Vic. Vic. Um, I'll say WA because I'm just on such a hot streak. It's WA. This is Western Australian. Oh. Hey, we're back, baby. This is Western Australian. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so, sorry, you know what this interjection, wine is, clearly. Interjection. May I ask what yeah. makes you say that? That's a good point. 
So well, that that is the the trick. That's the 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 once you calibrate yourself enough you can sort of sorry should jump into the mic that's the sort of trick like once you calibrate yourself enough you can actually kind of like become a lot more specific mm. around the verbiage that you use to be able to describe wine so um if this were south australian i would expect firstly i, I kind of I have a clear inkling it as to the variety as well potentially yeah. even the producer producer only because and noah probably already knows this the cap i can see the cap yep right and so and so there is there is a and that's confirmatory i can't see specifically the logo but it's sort of like i have an inkling already and i know what the variety is and once i can work backwards from there once i kind of know this is what this variety looks like in australia where does it look like this yeah well if it was in south australia it would be a lot more pronounced in what we call methoxypyrazines which is the sort of like um green bell pepper characteristics mm -hmm. and if it was from victoria the acid line would be so much more linear and, and fresh and vibrant to the point of almost sourness um you know it's in wa wa is the i think the only place that can really grow cabernet and we've seen outliers to this josh cooper's being the primary mm -hmm. example and there's your variety ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> you do this all the time. We this was a, this was the thing that you did on the old show. You did the explanation, and it's like, well. damn. Me and her right there with the cabinet. Yeah, yeah well, I was right about up. to just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so uh, yeah, it's just it's the only place that makes it look almost old world. Yeah. yeah that, right. That would could be as ripe as Bordeaux. That's what had me confused. Pristine. In the first time. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Fuck those, man. And you're gonna ask what sub regions? Uh, well, I, I'm, you will know, uh, yeah. but do, I'm just going to ask do you guys know the subregion of Western Australia. It's quite famous for Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't know any subregions in Western Australia. Margaret River? That's the Margaret one. River. This is I one. thought Margaret River was in New South Wales. <laughs> anyway. No, <Yeah>. no, absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, so this is Margaret River Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, now, a vintage? Uh, 2017. Just an arbitrary number. Could, could be. Um, 20 I'm just going to do this 2019 it looks like mm -hmm. what I'm going to split the difference and go 2018 It's 2019 Nice, nice. Well done. Thank you um, uh, Was that educated or was that just the ballpark? Brendan uh, producer um, Nice It's funny because I looked at the camera and was like Oh Vass But I don't think it's Vass It's it's the other ones that do really good Nebby Hollow That I can't think of the name right now See I <laughs> Gorgeous gorgeous artwork on the front of the bottle Blue and blue and orange and yellow Uh not Ben Brook, uh, it's coming. It's coming. Pat Cummins. It's not so coming. Christmas. Pat Cummins. Pat Cummins. I think no. it's Vass. I don't. I don't. Think I it's also Vass. think it's Vass. Thank you. There we go. Two against one. Don't even need to check. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is from uh, Deep Woods. Estate. Deep Woods. Deep That's Woods. Right. Deep Woods. Yes. yes. Uh, the, this is the 2019 Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon from Margs. This is awesome. Uh, and this is pretty fucking excellent. This is excellent. Cool. This is probably one of the. Best cabernets. I act. I don't really like. I never reach for a cab sav. Like literally, no, ever. no, very rarely. Um, because I like in my head, I attribute it to Penfolds. my grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and your like, grandpa was cool, right? Yeah, my grandpa was pretty cool. I guess. Um, he liked Stargate. He did like Stargate. <laughs> it's a long a rest story peace, here. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know. I've pigeoned my, I pigeonholed myself in a backwards way mm. where I only drink alternative varieties. You're, you're, you're sort <laughs> which of, which is really funny. You're like assisting the because I, I feel the same way. Like my dad and all of his mates drink cab sav, so I'm just like, ah, oh, I don't want to drink that. And it's sort of me. We we're talking before about like gatekeeping, yeah, yeah, gatekeeping being kept out, but we're sort of also just being like, no, nah, we don't want in, you know? Yeah, this we don't. Is nice. Like, yeah, but this is this is lovely. Yeah. The thing is, I think this is not. This is pretty. From what I think most people are in our demographic, yes, and I'm looking into your demographic, Thank Gemma, you. um, uh, is that Cabernet is really rich and mm, dense and heavy. dried and heavy and thick. Whereas you taste this, it's actually got freshness. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite, it has an, a level of refreshment whilst also being a full bodied, rich mm. little style of wine. Mm. So that really is achieved pretty well in Margaret River, less so in South Australia, which is always a bit riper. Mm -hmm. So I, I've tasted a few Cabernets this week that were set and I've just, well, actually, Cabernet's really cool everywhere, kind mm. of except made by a few people in certain places yeah so i was like this is That's great really this was like oh let's give it a crack it's fun we probably would never reach for it on the 
rack that we have downstairs because we're like, oh, grab some Fiano, grab some Chardonnay or whatever. Yeah. It's more yeah. refreshing. Yeah. Whereas you crack this open, you go, fuck, that's awesome. Correct. So, yeah. forgive me if this is a silly question, but is no such thing. Cab Sav, like, is, it's not native, like, there are no wine species that are native to Australia. No. Like, where is it? Uh, no. It's French? Yep. yep. Oh, yeah, fucking obviously Cabernet Sauvignon. Fucking. Yep. Yeah, but yep. now you know. Yeah, yep. And yep. now you've tried a Margaret River Cabernet. And yeah. now I've tried awesome. a, a Margaret River Cabernet. And it's gorgeous and um, beautiful. And uh, you want to have a stab at price? Whoa. I am going to say $48 a bottle. Mm. Oh, I reckon that's a good shout. I would pay I would pay 55 mm. for that. Yeah, I was in the 40s, like 44 85. Wow. 85. Oh, yeah. That's another that. reason that we wouldn't work It's nice, for but it. I like any bottle over $35, I'm probably not going to buy. Yeah. We're um, also very lucky in South Australia where we get like just at, like $85 value for 55. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Specs. Because there's so much We're of calibrated it. Calibrated. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that's almost $85 worth of value. I reckon you'd get that. Really you you nice. wouldn't be disappointed. You'd crack no, it up. No. like, that's a fucking great wine. I paid $85 for it. Bang. But is mm. it like a value buy? Maybe not. The alarming thing about that is so that's 85 bucks. If you're at a restaurant and you want to drink that, what's it going to cost you? Depends which state and city you're in. Probably like, like South Australia, 150, 150, yeah, 150 probably to here. 180. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be sub sub 200. 210 in Sydney. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Well, you got to you got to consider the cost of the uh, staff, the uh, food, the rent, the power, the service, the whole thing. That's right. that's included in the cost because if you were charging food at the same markup as wine, no one would eat at your fucking restaurant because it's so expensive. Yeah. So yeah, they yeah. don't make their money on food. They make it on the beverages. They make it on the beverages. beverages. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that we should mark up our own drinks, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lockie, do, how long have we been going for? Do we have time for one more question? 50 minutes. Oh, we got 10 minutes. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Awesome. So, well, this is actually a really good segue, I think, into the, the exercise that we just did was an amazing question that came through from uh, an individual that is currently taking this CMS, so the Quartermaster Sommeliers, which is similar to WSET. Mm. It's a great educational um, uh, platform for people looking to get more and more into the service aspect of wine. Service and um, tasting rather than like theory theory and business and, yeah. and stuff like that Practical. so uh hey i'm super new to the wine world but i'm very interested uh i'm currently taking the cms intro course and exam and i just had my first tasting it was three wines from burgundy pretty sick intro course and exam if you ask me they were awesome granted uh but i found it very difficult to discern different flavors and aromas how long does it take yeah, uh, slash how many tastings do you have to do to be able to pick out individual flavors and aromas and any tips to getting better outside of tasting? Can, can I say as a new wine drinker? Yeah. The more you drink, but like I'm not encouraged, like, sorry, the, let me rephrase. The more... <laughs> not at once. Yeah. The, more, the, <laughs> more, the more wine you taste, the more different wines from different vintages or whatever. Mm. And like, I, it's helped me to like actively make a mental note mm. mm-hmm. it like the easier it gets because noah sort of did a crash course with me on fiano sort of around when i started because it's you know one of the um, oh, things we do the- yeah like it's 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 our thing and we do it really well i like to think um yes, we do. but like actively making a note of like okay well this one came from this vineyard in this area on this soil and it tastes like salt. Yes. And then just doing that. Mm. Over and over again. So the, the sort of verbal cues. Another really good tip uh, was just comparative tasting. Don't, if you can, and it's expensive, but try to find a couple of mates to do it with, but like get two bottles mm. and taste them side by side. They actually don't need to really be like necessarily comparative bottles. It could be like just simple as like Cabernet next to a Chin and Blanc. Ideally, maybe I keep like red wines and white wines. Yeah. Like a Chenin plays a Sauvignon Blanc. Because then you see stark contrast in the smells and the taste. Even just going drink. to like, I'm going to learn about New Zealand wine. So I'm going to get a Pinot Noir and a Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. So you, it's like, that's what New Zealand does really well. These are yeah. what those taste like. And you can do that everywhere as much as you can within affordability reasons. Mm-hmm. And then and then you kind of get a deep, decent understanding of the world of wine and all these different varieties. And that's what like Wusset really does well. You could do yeah. a four day Wusset level two course and you can't, that's exactly what you're doing. You're like, all right, cool, now I understand. And then you can go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. But I think it's also like the intimidating thing is you so often uh, feel pressured to get the answer right. Correct. Or, or guess the right tasting note, but like everyone's palate is different. What Wildly. I taste in this wine, you might not necessarily yep. taste, or you yep. think is something slightly different. I don't. 
there's science to this. There's yeah, so- I th- it's like not this that, and that's one of the things that was so intimidating about being on blind wine tasting is that there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. You taste in it what you taste. And the filter between. I think that's freeing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's how I've come to cope with the stress that that show yeah, puts on me. Exactly. Just like fuck it, I can't say well, I don't think it does. So there's a cat. bunch of science on this. So um, what what we know uh, or what science knows is that we all taste the same. There are there's something called I believe it's called anosmia, which is the uh, where someone has you know, and there's only been a handful of cases ever recorded, which is where um, like you would put like a blueberry in your mouth and taste I don't know concrete. You might nah, take, like, that's, that's not anosmia. That's anosmia. 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 anosmia is the lack of smelling. You lack can't smell. smelling. No, I think there's yeah, okay. Maybe is maybe it's something but similar it to it where it's like where, it, yeah. where it's like oh, the, it definitely um, does. The, yeah changing of uh, or dulling down or changing altering actually how we perceive smell yes mm. uh, because of the mechanism of how we actually perceive smell mm. um, so we know that if you if, if we're putting this in your nose you and I are going to actually have the same distribution of flavour coming up into our nose and, and experiencing it we may experience it in different intensities so there is this concept of um, super tasters. Some people, that's what we say, like in the industry, often like I struggle with um, uh, things like uh, like Britannomyces. I'm all right with very low levels of Britannomyces. I find I don't really notice it at all. Other people are quite sensitive to Britannomyces and pick it up right away. Mousiness is, is something I'm super sensitive to. I can see it before most people will see it you know, in yeah. a general cohort. Mm. So the intensity that we see certain flavors does change, but we do um, largely smell the same. The issue is is the filter that happens between uh, us smelling something and us trying to describe it because yeah. of the muddiness and messiness of language. Yeah, and, th- and then, yeah. then there's the muddiness and messiness of that language going into another person's ears and the muddiness and messiness of, of them taking that on board. Because like when, when you're trying to describe how something tastes, you can only describe it based off of other things that you've tasted. And if you've not tasted anything like it... Describe to me the colour blue. It's fucking blue, man. Like the sky. It's really hard. It's yeah, you use everything but... But, but like, yeah. like, and, and I that's... F- yeah, so... Yeah, it's, it's just one. it's it's hard, like it's it's really hard, and like I feel like I have a sensitivity to acid, like tomatoes, yep. pineapple, mm-hmm. like citrus. I really really struggle with mm-hmm. so acidic wine. I really can't describe any sort of tasting notes apart from acid. it's burning my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doyle, you've come a hell of a long way in describing things. Um. Yeah, I think the uh, two pieces of advice I'd have is, first of all, don't, yeah, like you were saying, don't beat yourself up about, like, getting it right. Mm. There's no such thing as getting it right. All, uh, as we're saying, all of this is just trying to express how you feel about something to other people. And then if you want to get into, like, the guessing game of where's this from, who made it, why is it... Just remember, like, you two are very good at this game, right? Like, you are, like, objectively quite good at Noah's the... Noah's particularly, his palate's peaking at the moment. He's it's doing fantastically. Well. Last week on the show, you guys tried a wine that you both made and tasted the whole way, and you didn't know what it was. So, Correct. like... Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Wrong, I yeah. did. But you yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, <laughs> exactly. so the idea of beating yourself up about, like, oh, I'm not getting this, like... Like, it's it's a whole thing. And also, within the context, like, he's gone to his first CMS course and he's trying to taste different burgundies. That is a hard barrier. That is the mo- that yeah. is going straight and to the top and trying to, like... It's like skipping to the last level of a video game figuring and trying to figure yeah. out what controls work, actually work do what. Mm. So, that's the first thing. And the second thing I would say, the thing that's definitely helped me the most is put yourself in a room where you are nowhere near the smartest but you're also drinking with people who aren't making you feel like the stupidest. Yeah, if you're, if you're drinking mm. around a mm. bunch of like people who are judging you and hounding you for your tasting notes, you probably just shouldn't be hanging out with those yeah, people, Yeah, like something, something that I know, something that Brendan's really good at is when, uh, like, we, we, he just did it before when we were playing options. Like, you or I would say something and he'd be like, "Good, yeah, that's a good shout. That's a reasonable point. Even though he knows that he thinks that it's a good point for different reasons to why we think it's a good mm. point. But that little bit of encouragement is like... It's ah, still validating. I did make half a like, Yeah. I like it. I guess one of the things... Did I say that? Yeah, you did. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's just a knee-jerk reaction. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, don't I'm just be, a good guy by nature. Don't beat yourself up and find people who are passionate about wine to drink with. 
that you enjoy drinking that you with. enjoy drinking with because yeah. if you don't enjoy drinking with them then it's going to turn into a chore and it's going to feel yeah. like homework whereas this isn't mm. homework it's you don't want to be the person that goes up to like someone who doesn't know anything about wine it's like man this reason's quite austere isn't it it's like what the fuck do you this mean is, this is what I was yeah. this it's is wonderful what happened in, what the fuck do you in mean in my right. mind when we were talking about that Roussan you guys were saying that it was lazy and I'm like I just didn't oh yeah it's a hard one I just yeah. didn't fucking like it yeah. like yeah. it's true it's like there's no you yeah. Oh, I've been drinking with them for two years. I still don't understand what lazy is. I like, think it's a white powder. There, there is a good like, <laughs> like no, not coke. I just think it's genuinely like yeasty or something. I don't know. In it terms is. of um, like uh, other advice, um, the thing will be like most most of the time that we like eat food, we just eat it. We don't actually bother to taste it. Like mm. slow down a little bit. Mm. Um, you know, really understand the bare elements. It can be as simple as literally like going and grabbing some parsley, just a small leaf, and just chew it up and take like two minutes to just understand and appreciate the actual flavor of parsley and what it does to food. Just do it at the supermarket. Everything you eat (laughs) has tasting notes, but you're never really forced to sit down and actually think about flavors. And that's the great thing about, about like when you get good at tasting wine the actual benefit isn't the ability to be able to tell me whether something is of a variety or I don't care whether you can do that I think it's impressive it's and fun. cool and fun yeah. I get all and I, and I get wrapped up in it as, just like the next person does but like the actual cool thing that happens is your appreciation of an entire sense it's like it's like training your eyes or training your ears mm. you know mm. training like your sense of taste taste is is so ancillary in the modern day and age because mm. we've basically worked our way around it. We've hacked our way as the human race to get rid of the importance of taste. And I actually think it's exceptionally important and it takes a while to train. And it's, But it's also, that's not to discredit both of you guys because you guys both got, both got really good palates, maybe not as far as like identifying wines, regions and varieties and shit like that. But it's like, you guys, when you when I taste wines with both of you guys, you know, it tastes like this and it's like, yep, you're so spot on. And it's generally quite yeah. obscure. And mm. it's probably linked that you guys say? are both Have pretty tried, decent cooks as well. What did we try last week? Was it the new Pastafarian? Yeah. That I said just tasted like a black forest cake. It tasted like dark che- like dark chocolate and maraschino so, cherries. Yeah. So your olfactory bulb is hardwired to your brain by the limbic pathways. And that they are the, the parts of your brain that um, moderate your, your sense of memory. Mm. And so quite often when you smell something... <laughs> well, yeah. no, I do this you all the this? time. I know. I, no, no, I, I didn't know. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, was, yeah. I had an experience the other day where I smelt something and I said to Michael, I said, this smells exactly like that part of Crown Casino in the ground floor in Melbourne. Yeah. That bit where you stand by the waterfall because at Christmas time in 2015 they had this one event on and that's exactly yes. what it smelt yeah. like. Nostalgic and it, and it, and it hard yeah. wise. And like, so I didn't know that not everyone has that strong Sorry, I, like, actually, actually like, the limit pathways control your emotion centre and then like it, I think it hard wise I think into the hippocampus which, which is your long term memory and that's the reason why quite often like those things that make you uh like emotional whether you're like like this is why people like can quote family guy because it's really funny and then suddenly really funny things you can suddenly remember them you only need to watch them once or twice it's because mm. your emotions are heightened and actually hardwires into your short-term memory yeah right um, and so uh quite often say when i was first starting to taste wine the concept of i uh, just identifying say chardonnay just to confidently be able to identify chardonnay of course we now know that we use say oak as a bit of a trigger mm. um but often I'll be like, this reminds me of something really specific about my grandmother. Mm. And I'm like, no other grape variety would do this. Um, but it was always my grandmother. And then you, when you sort of delve into that a little bit more, just question a little bit more, you go, it was actually the custard that she cut up little bits of, um, you know, like Paul's custard. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do yeah. I know Paul's custard? Right. Uh, I've been to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and she cuts up bits of banana. Like, like little discs, right? And, and I would just eat that as a child and it was brilliant. such a brilliant experience. And it was only sort of later on that I realised yeah, that... I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah it's, it's lactones, which is oak, yeah. right? So it's the exact same things that occur in milk. But also diacetyl, which is um, a, ma- a byproduct of malolactic fermentation. Which is in bananas. Which is in very... Diacetyl is quite... If you smell pure diacetyl, they are... That is the, the uh, flavour of little bananas it's it's um mm. of the same group yeah of, of terpenes and so yeah like diacetyl you have those and you have all the same components happening in chardonnay it was only once you question um the concept of 
um, like where like delve into that memory a little bit more, you can actually start to go, ah, I smell this. I'm smelling custard. I'm smelling banana. And I'm then smelling, you can therefore, draw oak. On that. And maybe yeah, like a, yeah, yeah. a wine that has gone through a malolactic fermentation as you're overlaying a little bit of technical knowledge on top of that. And suddenly you're swelling a wine and just going, yep, cool, that's Chardonnay. Yeah. And that's how I built my sense of, of actually being very open to the most ridiculous things like like when you first started the show there is so many hot takes that when you were tasting mm. you were like it smells like insert something quite relatable here yeah because it like, is a relatable memory to most people growing strawberries up strawberries and cream lollies like soy sauce like yeah. splice all, ice cream these like, are all great. very real mm. yeah, yeah yeah but like when you think about we're starting to run a bit long here but when you think about that like wine world gatekeeping if you say to mm -hmm. a group of wine professionals this white wine tastes like a splice ice cream they'll laugh you out of the room i won't yeah, i'd fucking yeah, love that yeah like, i'll be best. like you're my friend like, yeah, come drink forest supply co have their own um, it's called wine wine splice. Splice. Yeah, 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 fuck yeah. people who don't like splices in wine fuck <laughs> <laughs> them <laughs> Uh, anyway, this was really fun. This was really was fun. fun. We're going to keep to time. Thanks so much for chiming in. If you love it, like it. Uh, if you really, really love it, subscribe to it. Ciao. <laughs> Billy. <laughs>